Hello, my dear learners. Welcome back to our video lesson. Today's objective is evaluate a written text based on its properties, organization, coherence, cohesion, log issues, and mechanics. Let's have an activity. Read and understand a given sample below and find out whether this can be considered as text. Put a circle if a statement applies to it. Journal Entry, Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank Sunday, 21st of June, year 1942 I get along pretty well with all my teachers. There are nine of them, seven men and two women. Mr. Kissing, the old foggy who teaches math, was mad at me for the longest time because I talked so much. After several warnings, he assigned me an extra homework. An essay on subject, a chatterbox. A chatterbox? What can you write about that? I'd worry about that later. I decided. I chatted down the assignment in my notebook, tucked it in my bag, and tried to keep quiet. Before you can identify whether it is a text or not, you need to understand what the text is all about. So, you need to answer the comprehension test that will follow. Comprehension check questions. Number one, who is speaking in the passage? A, a student, B, a teacher, C, a principal, D, a classmate. What do you think is the answer? Yes, letter A. Tom is, a, is an old foggy. He must be the oldest fashion man in the world. Foggy means what? Conservative, liberated, open-minded, or kind-hearted. The answer is, yes, correct. How about for number three? Why is the speaker assigned to do a chatterbox? A, because she was late. B, because she was absent. C, because she didn't submit her assignment in time. D, because she talked much. And the answer is, letter D, correct. What do you think is the speaker is doing? A, narrating. B, describing. C, informing. D, entertaining. Yes, that's right. What words are used to connect one sentence to another? What word is used to connect in a sentence? A, I, B, there, C, after several, D, I. The answer is correct, after several. Additional. Write yes if the statement is true to the paragraph you have just read. And now, if the statement does not apply. The paragraph is a written statement. The paragraph imparts a message. The paragraph tells us information. And the paragraph made us conclude. For number one, is it yes or no? Correct. How about for number two? Yes, you're right. How about for number three? Yes, correct. How about for number four? Correct. According to Jurgensen and Phillips, the following are the qualities of a text. Number one, cohesion, which means that the parts are connected. Number two, coherence, the overall, the overall text is meaning. Number three, intentionality, the writer's attitude and purpose can be discerned. Number four, acceptability, the text is recognized. Number five, informativity, there is a quantity of new or expected information. Number six, situationality. The text topic is situationally and culturally appropriate. And for number seven, intertextuality, meaning the text can be linked to preceding discourse. Get it? So, what is organization? So, we will be tackling four important things in this video organization, cohesion, coherence, coherence or cohesion. Language use and mechanics. So let's tackle first organization. It is how the ideas are well developed. It is clear statement of purpose, position, facts, examples, specific details, definition, explanation, justification, or the opposing viewpoints. 
and it is achieved when there is logical and accurate arrangement of the ideas. When you're going to write an essay, see to it that you have the three important parts of an essay. It will start with an introduction, followed with the body, and it will end with the conclusion. Then we proceed to coherence and cohesion. Coherence and cohesion make your text easier to follow and understand. Because cohesion is the connection of ideas to the central concept of text, while coherence is the relationship of ideas between sentences. Always take note class. Both should be present in a text to avoid confusion among readers. A text with cohesion has a central concept or glue that holds all the different ideas together, while coherence provides an apparent logic to the ideas presented. So cohesion and coherence should go together. Take for example, Cubism is an avant-garde art movement that started in early 20th century in Europe. A famous Filipino Cubist painter is Vicente Manansala. He's a national artist of the Philippines in visual arts. Did you know that visual arts have different forms including architecture, video, and textile? So they give an example. Every sentence is related to the next sentence in some way. The paragraph stays in the topic of art, which holds the text together and allows it to show cohesion. However, the way it was developed does not make sense. Why? It began with an origin of cubism, and through the artist Manansala, it was able to end with an unprovoked question about visual art forms. Something is wrong with it. Coherence without cohesion class. A text has ideas that are logically sequenced in a way that it is easy to follow for the readers. Although, without cohesion, no central concept links all this together, the main point of the text remains unclear for the reader. So the example above, it is lacking of cohesion. Though there is coherence, but there is lacking of cohesion. Look at here another example. My favorite painting is Weeping Women by Pablo Picasso, which is an intriguing paint that symbolizes suffering. As a result, I love bright primary colors, so I wear a lot of shocking colors, yellow, blues, and reds. Also as an outgoing person, I enjoy performing for large crowds. In the end, people should not judge an artist's talent based on one style. Connecting words in a text suggest a sequence of ideas that the writer wants to convey. As a result, it implies an, eff an effect of the previous statement while in the end indicates the conclusion. However, the writer jumps from one topic to another, resulting it in lack of cohesion. So you should not keep on skipping your ideas. Always remember class that you must focus on one thing so that the readers will not be misguided. Take for instance, the writer talks about his favorite colors as a result of Picasso's painting, even though they are not connected in way. It can be inferred that the choice of the favorite color was inspired by the colors of painting, but the writer does not make this clear. So there is vague ideas presented. Look at here another example. International Women's Day is celebrated on the 80th of March of every year. It began as a socialist political event in several Western countries. Then, other countries also started celebrating the holiday just as a way to express their love for women. Currently, the United Nations observes the holiday as a way to bring to light women's issues around the world. What have you observed? The main topic of the text is International Women's Day, right? Which was also stated in the first sentence. The paragraph proceeds to the outline, the history of the holiday starting from Western countries and its spread to other nations. And it ended with the current way that the whole world celebrates the date. 
the writer can present different ideas about holiday in logical manner and without veering away from the topic. So, the sentence talks only about what? About holiday. It is all about holiday. The celebration of holiday of what? The importance of women. Yes, correct. Then let's proceed to language use. This is very important. It is the appropriateness of the words vocabulary usage. How you use a language affects the tone of the text and the reader's interpretation. Here are the words and phrases to avoid. Too formal, too unsophisticated, and too vague. Why we need to avoid those three? Too formal. Look at here an example. The vents were a bit difficult to reset. The word is the word used is a bit. Look at here in an alternative, which is better to be used. The vents were difficult or somewhat difficult to reset. This is more understandable than using the word a bit. Neither. Too unsophisticated. Look at here the example. The person gets attention. And look at here the alternative. This person receives attention, which is more uh, good to read. This person receives attention or this person gets attention. Yes, the second example is better than the first one. And why we need to avoid vague information or sentences? Look at here an example. The report presents many things. What are those things he presented? Look at here the alternative. The report presents many details or findings or recommendations. So it is more specific what is the writer trying to present, right? An additional thing to be avoided. Jargon. The terms difficult to the readers to understand because there are some terms which is only applicable to this to this field or whatever. Cliches and expression that are overused, such as out of the box and but the end of the day. Why not use another term instead of using those? Slam, cups, cool. Have you observed other uh, nationalities? They are very slang in uh, speaking. Thus, it makes us or there is what we call misunderstanding. I couldn't forget one of my experiences way back when we um, met our brother-in-law coming from uh, Switzerland. He asked me, Do you have N in it? I said, what? N in it, N in it. And it made me wonder, what is N in it? And he pointed to my phone, N in it. Do you have N in it? And I was surprised upon realizing after how many minutes that he is referring to internet. So see? So it matters a lot. Then not gender neutral, which means fireman, mankind. Why not something like it is equal, not only for men, though it is understandable that it's for everybody, but something that is very biased, the women, right? So we have to avoid those. Then let's proceed to mechanics. So a while ago, we discussed what? First is the organization, and it was followed by cohesion and coherence, and language use. Then we have now mechanics. This is very important. It is a set of conventions on how to spell, abbreviate, punctuate, and capitalize. This is usually our mistakes no the mechanic always remember class that we have to avoid contractions and exclamation points unless it is part of a direct quotation mention the full name before the abbreviation then numbers of 0 to 10 must be spelled out always 
spell uh, do not write, just write the number one number zero number five you must have to spell let's have a summary properties of a well-written text are organization coherence and cohesion languages and mechanics an organization the ideas are well developed with clear statement of purpose position facts examples definition explanation justification and viewpoints while coherence and cohesion the parts are always connected and the overall text should have to present its meaning while the language is the, is the appropriateness of the word and vocabulary usage we have to use appropriately the words and of course the mechanics the set of conventions and spelling, abbreviation, capitalization, and others. Especially nowadays class, I, I really observe that we usually misspell the words because of the use of, because we are used of uh, texting. Because the means of te texting, we, may, we, we made all the words in shortcut form. And sometimes you forget that. The E, the E, and we are not aware of those sometimes. We forget those that mechanics is very important because if we misspell the words, then the meaning also vary. So you have to keep track on this properties of a well written text, such as organization, coherence, and cohesion, languages, and mechanics. I have here a test for you. I want you to evaluate the written text based on its properties, organization, coherence, cohesion, language use, and mechanics, and determine what property is used. Jenny took the dogs with her and a poor or ne negative result instead of a bad result. For number three, during the early 20th century, in addition to industrialization, urban growth, and technological development, Australian society was experiencing a formation of domestic ideal. And for number four, President Rodrigo Duterte is the 16th president of the Philippines. Of the Philippines, he is also the former mayor of Davao City for a long time. And for the last number, this morning was crazy. My alarm clock was set for p.m. instead of a.m., so I woke up real late. I changed my clothes and rode my bike as fast as I could. When I arrived in school, I was shocked because nobody's around. When I checked my calendar, I have noticed that today is holiday. I left at myself and rode back home. I want you to write your answer in the comment section below. And for your additional activity, I want you to explain shortly why or write your answer in the comment section rather what will happen to an essay or sentence without coherence, cohesion, and a correct language use? Thank you for watching and God bless us all.